Hi, and welcome to our presentation on the instrumental analysis of iron in soil samples using Flame AAS and ICP MS. Iron is not only an important nutrient in the human body, but it also plays an important role in plants. Iron is taken up from the soil around plants and is used to transport oxygen and enables many enzymatic functions. A lack of iron, known as chlorosis, leads to drooping yellow leaves and decreased yields. For this reason, iron content in, of soil can be highly valuable information to the agricultural industry, and as such, instrumental analysis of iron in soils has become common practice. Although various instruments exist to facilitate this analysis, the two we will talk about are Flame AAS and ICP MS. Before any soil sample can be measured for iron concentration, the iron has to be extracted from the matrix. Some of these extractions can take many hours to prepare and generally involve separating the layers of dry soil, uh, grinding, sieving the soil and then extracting the nutrients such as iron into solution and filtering. Some instruments have particular difficulties analysing samples with any solids present or even high salt concentrations, so extra care must be taken in those circumstances to thoroughly digest or dilute samples. So now we'll move on to the instruments used to analyse the iron, starting with Flame AAS. So what is Flame AAS? AAS stands for Atomic Absorption Spectroscopy. This refers to an instrument which is able to measure the amount of energy absorbed by atoms. The absorbances recorded are directly proportionate to the concentration of atoms within the optical path. The flame is the source of the energy provided which atomizes the sample and converts the sample to a gaseous state. Flame is usually an air acetylene flame which uses temperatures of roughly 2300 degrees Celsius However, when higher temperatures are required, such as for oxide-forming elements, temperatures of up to 2,900 degrees Celsius can be reached using a nitrous oxide acetylene flame. So now that we know what flame AAS is, the question is how does it work? Well, a diagram of a typical flame AAS is shown here. This shows how the sample is fed through a tube into a nebulizer, which converts the solution to a mist, before passing the atoms through the flame. The high energy flame atomizes the sample and converts the mist to a gaseous state. At the same time, a hollow cathode lamp containing your analyte of interest creates an optical path through the flame. An attenuation of the light can be detected as the atomized iron absorbs light of a specific wavelength. This difference is detected using a phototube detector after passing through a monochromator to separate the iron's optical path from the unwanted background radiation. The most commonly used phototube detector is a photomultiplier which converts the incoming photons into electrical signals and these signals are converted into a digital readout. The key benefit to using Flame AAS is the very low running and capital cost. Being cheap to purchase and even cheaper to run makes Flame AAS a suitable choice for most laboratories unable to justify or afford the more expensive instruments. Not only is the Flame AAS cheap, but it's also very easy to use and there's no risk of unwanted mass effects during sample ionisation, such as doubly charged ions. And finally, owing to its simple design, it's able to withstand relatively high contaminants in the sample and still give reasonably accurate results. So if those are the pros, what are the cons? Well, the most striking flaw is the difficulty constraining atomic vapour in the optical beam. This leads to lower sensitivities, therefore requiring greater concentrations of iron before detection is possible. What makes things even more challenging is that there are also limits to the scale on which iron can be quantified, normally requiring a concentration in the order of 1 to 20 parts per million. This may lead to the need to dilute many samples prior to analysis, which increases the chances of error, as well as time and energy preparing samples. Even if those problems could be fixed, few improvements are being actively researched into Flame AAS, as other more modern instruments are leading the way in analytical analysis of iron and other metals. Now I will discuss inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry. The ICP instrument consists of a sampling interface where the sample is nebulized and sprayed into a plasma chamber, a plasma torch where high-grade argon gas is ignited to form argon ions, 
These ions oscillate in an electromagnetic field which causes them to collide with other argon atoms forming plasma at temperature up to 10,000 degrees Kelvin. The plasma blasts the sample, converting it into a gaseous state and ionizes it. Electrons are stripped, converting it to positively charged ions. Then an ion focusing system converts the sample into a focused beam that is shot towards the mass separation device. A vacuum chamber is required to prevent the ions from hitting air molecules which would cause unwanted interference. The mass separation device is a quadrupole which consists of four long curved electromagnets, two with a positive charge and two with a negative charge that guide samples of varying mass and charge around a bend towards a detector by modifying the strength of the magnetic field. And a detector consisting of a metal box with a wire attached for measuring an electrical signal that is generated when ions hit it. Advantages include excellent detection rates. It can detect at concentrations as low as one part in 10 to the 15, or parts per quadrillion for certain isotopes. Superior ionization. The extremely high energy plasma source provides very thorough ionization, meaning samples are fully decomposed into their constituent elements and converts them into ions. Speed. They are much faster than other analytical techniques. For example, some instruments can measure around 80 elements in only 3 minutes. Speed. They are much faster than other methods. For example, some instruments can measure around 80 elements in only 3 minutes. Sample size. Only very small quantities of the sample are required. Disadvantages of ICPMS include detection limits. As the technique relies on the ionization of elements, elements that tend to form negative ions are difficult to detect. These include the halogens, chlorine, iodine and fluorine, etc. Poor sample transport and increased instability of samples over long measurement sequences. And gaseous elements cannot be detected such as hydrogen and helium, as well as carbon and most actinides. Iron detection limits are only around 4 parts per billion due to the many polyatomic interferences of other compounds which have the same mass to charge ratio. Interference. Argon can form some additional compounds such as argon oxides. Analytes with a higher mass relative to the matrix may result in mass effects. Also, doubly charged species can introduce interference. A high skill level is required to operate the instrument. A moderate level of chemical interferences can occur, so calibration is required. Cost. Much higher capital costs are involved, with relatively higher running costs compared to other instruments. Despite the detection limits, Flame AAS is still a reasonable solution for iron soil analysis and is used in industries where the detection levels obtainable are acceptable and also where large amounts of analyte are available. It also has the advantage of having relatively lower capital and running costs, as well as not producing mass effect interference. On the other hand, where speed and accuracy are paramount, ICPMS is the obvious solution where higher operator skill and the additional costs can be justified, able to quantify iron soil analytes at much lower detection levels with smaller sample sizes and higher throughputs. With the ability to analyse such low levels of trace metals, many labs would not be able to operate as efficiently as they do without this invaluable instrument. Thank you.